Well, how about it, y'all? This is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms, and welcome back to another video. Uh, if you're new here, I'd like to welcome you. Um, we're located here in Newberry, South Carolina, where we have a meat goat farm, and we also do a lot of other things on our channel as far as gardening, uh, canning, all kind of homestead stuff, raising our own meat, and uh, we're just kind, tr kind of trying to capture the journey of all of that. Uh, but today, we're going to be talking all about the goats and um, deworming and some issues that we're seeing with our deworming program right now. So y'all stick with us and I hope you enjoy the video. So like I said, this whole video is going to pertain mainly to the goats and deworming. Uh, if you caught our last video that we posted last week, you um, saw where we worked all the goats and we, we dewormed everybody, did a bunch of hoof care. Uh, but that video was actually filmed about three weeks ago. And since then, we've uh, noticed a, quite a problem with our, our goat herd as far as the worm load. Uh, we've actually lost two goats and, you know, as sad as that is, I don't want to lose any animals. And, you know, I care for my animals. I want to take the best care of them that I can, but it's also a loss for us, um, for us profit. And so we got to step up our game and try to do a little bit better. And um, I'm kind of explain to you today on how we're going to do that. So in the past, we've kind of just guessed our goat's weight while um, deworming. We, I think we're pretty close most of the time, uh, but that's not a sure way to do it. And that's a if you're under dosing, you can really build up immunity in those, those worms quickly. Uh, so today, our first step of what we're going to be doing different from going forward is we're going to be using a farm scale. Uh, this behind me is an Artfield uh, Instant Way farm scale. It was actually taken out of an old farrowing house for hogs. Uh, the farmer went out of business. He wasn't using the hog house anymore. He wasn't using this. So he actually gave this to me and... I uh, tried to work on it yesterday, tried to get back to its original condition um, with uh, minus the scale. I bought a new scale, um, but I had to do some rigging on it. Uh, it originally had two bars going across the front and the back and kind of kept it from swaying back and forth so much. Uh, but I could not get this scale to work right with that. Uh, so to today, I actually welded up this arch that goes over the top and I hung my scale in the center. Uh, the scale I got off of Amazon for 30 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description box for that. Um, but I've already weighed my trusty companion rivers in it, and it's pretty close. So I think we're gonna be get a whole lot closer with our dosage while we're worming. Um, I'm gonna walk into the, the barn real quick and we're gonna talk about what else we're gonna be changing. So like I said, we're gonna be changing one more thing, uh, the way we deworm. And in the past, I've used one dewormer for probably the past two and a half years and that's going to be prohibit uh, prohibit worked out great for us for about two years um, and when you're mixing it i normally mix it for the cattle the standard drench solution and that's one quart of water uh, per pack so i normally mix it in a pint uh, so i can get two mixes out of it because this stuff only lasts about 90 days in your fridge until you need to toss it out uh, but I've already got some mixed up, so we're not going to be mixing this up today uh, unless we run out. If we do, I'll show you that process. But like I said, we're going to be changing some things up. And I've done a lot of research here recently. I've seen some YouTube videos of other people doing it. And it's working out well for them. And that is combination deworming. Uh, using multiple drugs at the same time using separate syringes. And I think we're going to give it a shot because like I said, we we definitely have some immunity to this in our um, in our worm population. The drug that I picked up that we're going to be using uh, today with Prohibit is the Valbazin. Now Valbazin is a, a different chemical than the Prohibit, and there's really three classes of dewormers that you want to be using, focusing on the barber pole worm. That's the majority of your worm problems, and that is yeah, Valbazin is one product. Uh, prohibit and sidectin. Uh, the reason I I'm not going ahead and using all three uh, in, at one time for its combination wormer is really uh, just financially. Uh, the valve, the sidectin is really expensive. Uh, it's about twice the cost of sidectin, 
inside or valbazin and prohibit is about half the price of the valbazin. So what was costing me about 80 cents per head to deworm uh, is now costing me about $1.20 per head. And if I was to add that sidectin on there, uh, that's gonna add, get it on up above $2 per head. So at, at, I will probably eventually head that way uh, using all three at one time. But as of right now, with losing two goats, uh, kind of in the middle of the year, we got um, winter coming for us having to buy feed. I just don't want to put more money into the goat herd right now if I don't have to. Uh, so that's the reason. Uh, there's a lot of studies that go into doing this combination warmer. And the, pretty much uh, the generic uh, story of it is that basically our prohibit, uh, those, those worms have already built up a resistance to that. They're not going to have the same resistance to the valbazin because it's a difficult, dif uh, different chemical, sorry, different chemical in the valbazin than there is in the prohibit. Uh, so basically you're killing the worms that has the resistance to the prohibit and they're not able to reproduce continuing those genes of being immune to the prohibit. So the efficiency of the prohibit will increase by using another chemical along with it. Now, if I was to stop using the prohibit and just go on the valbazin, I'd be killing off the ones that are immune to the prohibit, uh, but the ones that get immune to the valbazin, I won't be killing off with the prohibit. And so when, eventually when we add sidedectin to the mix, between all three chemicals, it should wipe them all out. Uh, these are the three chemicals that are, that are uh, available in the United States. Uh, I mean, there's other versions of valbazin for the chemical property. Um, I can't pronounce all these words. I'm not gonna try right now uh, for the chemical that's actually in there. But with all that being said, I think I covered that well. If I didn't, just please leave a comment or leave a question in the comments and I'll, I'll be glad, glad to get back with you. Uh, so I think right now we're gonna go uh, get the goat herd, bring them down here to the barn, uh, see if my little makeshift setup with that scale works. And we're just going to work through them all. We're going to be checking their eyelids for us, their Fomacha score. Uh, if they're pale at all, we're going to go ahead and hit them with both warmers. Uh, I've got some that I know are really pale that I've been kind of treating in the pasture with red cell. So we're going to be giving them a doses of red cell. Uh, red cell is a something that you can buy at Trap Supply. Uh, it's in the horse section. It's got a lot of iron in it. it, helps them get over their anemic state. And we'll get into all that later. So I'm gonna go grab a bucket of feed. We're gonna get the goats down here and I'm gonna catch back up with you. And we're gonna start working these goats and see how this scale works and see how using the combination wor um, warmer works. So we finally got everybody down here. It kind of took a little while. Uh, some of these little guys have never came to a bucket. All they've mm -hmm. seen is a creep feeder. I'm not feeding my adults right now. Uh, we'll start feeding them again towards breeding. Uh, but I'll show you my plan is to kind of run them through where this goat's headed into the scale. And then I can shut the gate. Uh, this little push handle right here will open that gate. Whenever I'm done with them, I can open that gate. They run into this little area. I've got all my vaccines, my red cell, and everything ready to go here sitting in ice. That stuff needs to stay cold. And up here on this post, I've got my chart of how much warmer each goat should have depending on their weight. You can find this chart online. I will find a, a link to, to share that with and I'll put it in, that, in the description box. So I guess let's turn the scale on, get it zeroed out, and we'll get started. I'm gonna set the camera up and we'll record some. Once I get the hang of it, um, I'll bring y'all in and tell you if this is gonna work or not.
Well, we're able to get everybody weighed and wormed today. I checked a lot of eyes and the majority of them needed to be wormed. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad we made the decision to go ahead and switch to a combination wormer. We're gonna see how that goes. Uh, it did take a whole lot longer than I was expecting. It took about two and a half hours to get through about 40 goats. Uh, so we're gonna have to narrow, I mean, figure out how to, to cut that time down. Uh, I do have plans on, on building a nice working chute and we might possibly get a scale for the floor of that. Um, but that's in the future, and uh, we'll be sure to make a video of that. But we got all our nannies and our kids done. Uh, I've still got to check my billies. Uh, I'm going to put them in the sheet, weigh them, and check their eyes. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to worm them. I kind of have a little bit of a rule that I don't worm my billies. I want them to, to pass on good genetic of parasite resistance. Uh, so we'll check them and we'll see if I have to worm them. It might be, we might be thinking about getting a new billy. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm trying to breed parasite resistance into my herd. So with that being said, I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us today. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We're going to do a t-shirt giveaway once we hit 500 subscribers. Uh, so if you want to get entered in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment of some of y'all's practices, and uh, I'd love to see what y'all do on y'all's farm. But I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us, and we'll see y'all on the next one.